get a £5 free bet every week with Offer Club from William Hill. Simply stake a total of £20 or more across the week on pre-match football accumulators with four or more selections and you'll get a £5 free bet on the Friday. Join William Hill Offer Club on mobile or online now. Coogan Cassius here. I'm joined at the Ringtone Gym here in London with the one and only Vinny Paz. How are you, sir? Thank you. Nice to sort of meet you, sort of not, but nice to be doing this with you. Looking forward to it. Bring it. Bring it, absolutely. Um, I met you a couple of years ago, uh, as we were just talking about there in, in Las Vegas, uh, a Mayweather fight, and you, you were talking about the film then, and it was nigh on completed back then, I understand. Yeah, um, it, it's been a long uh, case of, of editing the movie, and it's, the movie's fabulous, and, and Martin Scorsese put the final edits on it. Ben, ben Younger was a genius, you know, directing it and writing it. Bruce Cohen, Pam Thurr, they were the bomb. You know, they, they literally produced the movie also, and uh, it, ca it came out fabulous. It, it really did. Like, you know, I, I did it, but they really did it. <laughs> because you can have a great story and it not be told well. They told it 100% real and 99% real. And it came out absolutely fabulous. I want to come on to the film uh, in just a little bit. Vinny, your, your career and your life is absolutely remarkable and extraordinary and very unique um, in what you've achieved in your career, what you've been through. Um, this film obviously highlights um, that. Well, some of that. Yeah. Some. Some, some of it. Some. Um, it should have had me when I went. It should have had me when I went to the Playboy Mansion <laughs> a couple of times. <laughs> that, that could have been a movie all in itself. <laughs> but um, what seems to be kind of a defining uh, day in your life, um, the day you had the accident. I mean, to this day now, however many years ago, what do you actually remember from moments before that crash? I remember the last thing that was on my mind when the car was skidding down the road and I was holding on to the door handle for dear life. I just remember thinking, saying to myself, oh my God, you're never gonna defend your world title that I had just won a couple weeks earlier. And then boom, the, the accident happened, the car hit us and, uh, and you know, the rest is, is history. The doctors and the experts specifically told you that one, you wouldn't be able to box again, and two, you may not be able to walk again. What goes through your head when someone of expertise like that tells you that? I was just, I just won the world title again, and you know, I, I didn't want to hear that. That was the last thing I wanted to hear, and I just, I, I kind of didn't accept it, and you know, fought against all odds, and it's, it's gonna be a great, inspiring movie for a lot of people to see. Because, like, I think after people see this movie, they will get out of wheelchairs and walk with cr crutches. They will get off crutches and walk by themselves. You know, it'll make people do a lot of things that they didn't think they could. And uh, that, you know, that's the greatest thing about any, that's the greatest thing about anything, never mind a movie, but you know, that's the greatest thing that this movie's going to do for a lot of people. It's kind of an iconic image now of you and this halo that you used to wear uh, to support you. Um, I understand as well that the first weight you lifted was like a, what, a 25 key uh, weight. And uh, just talk to me about what you remember from the first time you lifted that weight. I, I remember walking down into the, my basement of my parents' house and sitting on, the, on the, the bench and looking at the weights, looking at them, just looking at them for uh, maybe a half hour. And, and, and then I said, all right, we're gonna do this. I got up and I, I lifted two 25 pound dumbbells and the pain just shot through my body like a hot flash. And I dropped the weights and, you know, tears out in my eyes and uh, I sat back on, on, the, on the bench 
pressing. I just kept staring at the weights again. And I went back to him and I picked up two 20 pound weights and it killed me, but I started doing reps, doing, doing biceps, doing shoulder work. And that was it. From that moment on, it was, I was all in and, and I was working out till, uh, till I got the halo off. And, and it, it helped me a lot. You know, it made me, it made me come back and be able to win three more world titles. What were people around you saying to you, your training team, your family? What were they saying to you while you were going through trying to even train again, let alone box again? My my mother and father, I didn't tell them, you know, till maybe maybe a month after, you know, maybe like a month, after, weeks after I had broke my neck. I didn't tell anybody except the, my buddy that was picking me up to go to the gym. And um, my mother st started figuring it out when I was putting on, like my clothes were, were wet from sweat that I was working out in the cellar. And she's going, Vinny, like, why are your clothes wet? She said, please don't tell me you, you, you're doing anything, Vinny. She said, please, that, don't, don't even tell me that, right? I'm like, no, ma, you know, you know, how this thing on my head, it makes me sweat, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, I said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm cool, ma, don't worry, everything's cool, and then eventually I end up telling them, and, uh, and my father came to the gym with me one time, I'll never forget it, when, when he left the gym, he was drenched, <laughs> his clothes were soaked, he, um, I got lucky that I had good parents, and, um, uh, yeah, my father, the first time he, he watched me work out with that halo on, think the screws in my skull. He, we left there and, and he literally was soaking wet. It was really funny. Vinny, it was... That's, that's love. Absolutely, yeah. That's, that's love, and it's pretty cool. You gotta, you gotta be lucky, blessed to have cool parents. You know, I, I, got, I got blessed. Vinny, there was a 13-month a period between that accident and when you fought... Uh, Luis Santana, um, that week into that fight, what was going through your head that specific week? Yeah, yeah that's, that was a wild week, you're right. And I don't know, just, I mean, just, I, I said a, mi a million times, you're going you're gonna to do this. You've got to do this, Paz, man. You're going to make this happen. And, or you're going to die trying. And that's it. I was I was tunnel vision. I was I was in a hundred percent, and um, I I got lucky and everything worked out really really well for me. Got lucky, lucky and hard work, and blessed. The title of this movie, Bleed for This, um, this stemmed from something your father used to say to you. Can you just explain to us a little bit about that? The title of this film. I used to gamble a uh, little too much, and my father would always tell me, he said, champ, you bleed for this money. I said, you, you can't give it to those casinos. They'll take you, they'll take you for all you got. You bleed for this money, kid. And I told that to Ben Younger one day, and I guess it really hit, hit him. And, and then weeks later, much long later, when I asked him, like maybe like after I don't know weeks and months, I said, Ben, what are you gonna name the movie? I said, I think Paz would be a pretty cool name. He said, No, Vinny. I said, Why not? I said, Call it Paz. It's pretty cool. You know, it's you know my last name. It's, it's in, in it means peace in Spanish. There's a lot of people that followed me. Um, he said, Put your ego on the shelf, Vinny. We're calling it Bleed for This. I said, Bleed for this. And then he told me, he said, when your father told you you bleed for this money, that's what we're going with. And, and you know, I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad they did now. <laughs> I'm glad I put my ego on the shelf. <laughs> I mean, this is one side of your life, but your career, obviously, inside the ring, um, five-time world champion across three weight classes, uh, you fought just about everybody. You had a, a double win over the hands of Stone, Roberto Duran. What, what do you class as the highlight of um, your career in the ring. Was it that fight against Luis Santana? Not specifically the fight, but what that represented? You know, basically, um, 
That's a great question in, in impossible to answer because I felt like when I won the national championship on, on ABC on the wide world of sports when I was 18, 19, um, I won the lightweight championship of the United States. That, that was the highlight of my life till that point. That was, that was it. I didn't think it could get any better than that. Then I win the lightweight championship of the world in Providence. Before I win that title, I fight Joe Frazier Jr. in the Providence Civic Center. Sold out the place. There was like 17,000 people in there standing. You know, it, the, the Civic Center only held 15,000 at the time. They had literally over, over 16,000 people. That was, I stopped him in the seventh round. That, it couldn't have got any better than that night. And then I win the world title, and you know that's it. I thought that's it. All right, I found the Lord. <laughs> this is this is unbelievable, and um, that just it just a couple of things got better than that. You know, I, I broke my neck, and you know that was the worst. And I came back. I, I won my my fight coming back after breaking the neck. That you know couldn't have got any better. Then I um. I lost fights, then I ended up knocking this kid out, Dana Rosenblatt, couldn't have got any better than that. Then I ended up moving on, winning a couple more world titles and just, it just couldn't get any better than that. You know, fighting Duran, even though he was 93, you know, still, he's unbelievable. No matter what age he is, hit me the hardest. It, it couldn't get any better than that. And then when I got my 50th win, that's it. I was done. I got the 50 wins, and that, that was I was very content and happy with what I've done and made a lot of people. I gave, a, I, at least I, I entertained a lot of people over the years, millions of people, and that's pretty cool. You know, I got, I got, I got some serious fans, and I love it. I, I take it to heart. You know, I got people that name their kids after me. I got guys that put tattoos on me on their body. You know, it's, it's, it's quite amazing, and appreciate it respect it and uh, I fought for it and I fought for them people so it's a good thing and the, the, I can't say any one moment I just gave you I don't know how many did I just reel off 20 things <laughs> Vinny I want to ask you about the darker side of boxing recently um, here uh, in the UK we've had instances where a young boxer from Scotland died in the ring recently um, and there's been quite a few notable boxers that have suffered bleeds on the brain that have had to retire from the sport. Now, Vinny, you collapsed after the Roger Mayweather fight um, in the dressing room. Um, is there a reason for this? Is there a way of stopping um, these instances from happening? Because it, it seems to be, I don't know whether it's happening more or it's being highlighted more now. Yeah. I, I know what you mean, and there's no really great answer to that um you know like i was just losing too much weight and that's what guys think they have to do and you know i literally almost died after the mayweather fight um and if it wasn't for kevin rooney i would have been doing the same thing so you know who knows i, pr I pr probably could have died um it's it's weird how things happen in in life for people but uh I um boxing's a crazy game, you know, it's a great sport. It's a it's an absolutely great sport. I love the art of boxing, like the boxers, like two guys in the ring, you know, fighting it out, you know, duking it out until one wins. You know, you gotta love that. But you know, the, there's you know, there's always stuff that goes on behind the scenes and you know, it can, it gets ugly with the promoters and the managers. You know, I I don't even, you, you can't even go into it, and, and we, we don't have enough time to talk about it, but boxing is a, is, a, is a great game. You know, it's being overtaken a little bit. It's in the shadow of MMA now, but uh, it, it's, uh, boxing is one of the, the greatest sports in the world uh, of all time, you know, it, and people will always know that and respect it. On the current scene today, who ticks the boxes for you? Um, 
if you're looking, not specifically comparing it to when you fought, but just who's doing it for you now? Who do you think's the real deal at the moment? There's, um, there's quite a few really good fighters now. Um, they're not getting the attention that they deserve because the attention is not on boxing anymore. It's on MMA a little bit. And I don't know. I, I, I like seeing, I wanted to see Floyd get to 50 wins, you know, just just because he he's he's pretty amazing to to watch and and like I know I know a lot of people don't like him and you know I understand but he um he's he's pretty amazing how how his defense is you know he don't get hit which is amazing and he's even now you know later on in life and he's still you know hitting it strong so I um yeah I, li I like to see Floyd and uh you know, it's, I, I almost, like, I hate to say it, but y you know the old saying, like, you work in the donut factory, you get sick of the donuts? Eh, I don't watch boxing, like, you know, as much as I should. <laughs> I kind of fell off the game, the sport, a little bit, but it's nothing better than to see a good fight, and that's going to last till the end of time. So let's end this conversation on that note. Vinny Paz, listen, thank you very much for talking to us. Um, we wish you the best of luck with this film. I mean, I haven't seen the film yet, but December 2nd it's out, and the trailer looks fantastic, and this is a, a real-life story of of you and, and your struggle and your your glories. Blood and grit, and, and I look very forward to you seeing it. Yeah, matter of fact, I want to talk to you after you watch it. I want you to tell me, wow, Vinny, you, you weren't kidding. The movie's good. It's it's quite amazing, and you're gonna like it, and it's gonna inspire you. It's gonna inspire you. You're gonna do this a little better. You're gonna do what you what you're not telling anybody that you wanted to do. You're gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna see you be the next heavyweight champ in the world. We're nowhere. <laughs> He's doing that. What, you, want a, you want a little spa now? If you got a spare f that? few minutes, Vinny, we can go now. We can have a quick quick couple of minutes now. You are out of my weight class, and if I take this watch off, I'm still fast. Believe me. <laughs> I don't want to go there. Vinny Paz, I don't want to go there. Trust me. Awesome, brother. You, right. you did a great job. Thank you very much. Too cool.